Hi, this is Jeff. I'd like to show the basics of this uh, um, mechanism. There's four basic components. They can be as simple as um, a bent piece of sheet metal. That would be called the discontinuous ferromagnetic band. There's a um, magnetic rigid body, which in this case is just a stack of three disc magnets. You have your continuous track, which is basically a space that permit or a spacer that permits travel from one band to the next and you have a mechanical initiator which is in this case going to be my hand so um, essentially all the mechanical initiator does is allow the magnet to be released towards the magnet so I'm just going to let go and it zips across so notice with one band it stops that's going to be consistent in whichever way we we turn it but when it's discontinuous, or discontinuously, or non-uniformly thick, or bent, then you can lay them in an array and do the same exact thing. Now, when the mechanical initiator releases them this way, they do not stop. They continue all the way along the track until it gets down to the very last one. And that can be as fast or as slow as you want it to be. Obviously it needs to be guided properly. This is just kind of rolling along a flat piece. Now you say, oh, it's just got the momentum going. No, no, I can do it as slow as I want. So I got here wheels, I don't know if you can see where, I have wheels, like rollerblade wheels, um, and they space the magnet a little farther, and I'm just gonna have it just crawl along that path. And you see it just keeps on going, no matter how slow it is. The speed is adjusted by, um, by uh, uh, distance, spacing, thickness of materials, metals, how strong the magnets are, all these factors. There's also some resistive effects, but basically, that's all it is. Now, on the underside of this, I just, I use, just using some duct tape just to demonstrate. But you can see that they're just overlapping um, bent pieces of metal. As simple as it is, and they are then permitted to jump. Cool thing about this little demonstration is I can actually curve it and show that the effect works in the same way. All right. Or I could do it sideways. Of course, it would be better to have an arm turning. See how far I can bend it. That's a pretty good bend. It's not showing up in the camera. There, there we show that. Okay, and obviously there's some force. It has. It's a little harder to get up, but that's okay. That can be adjusted or turned sideways, and then it rolls very easily around any path I want it to go, as long as it has enough momentum, enough force. To get it past the first band, then I can go to the second, the third, and the fourth, as many as I need. If I were to take this and turn it all the way in a full circle, you get the gist. It would cycle. Now, how do you get the initial one? You notice, how do you start it? Well, it's very, very simple. Since I'm just using duct tape, I will take off. Ah, I don't even need to. Here we go. I take one of these bands, and let's suppose there's the bend, all right, there's the bend, and then all I would do is basically bend it away a certain distance, and boom, it goes. So if you can imagine, each one of these plates could be depressed down so that I can press one to start it and press another one to stop it down here. So let's try again. Obviously, I'm just kind of holding it here, but if you look to the beginning, I line them up. They're pretty much evenly spaced, not exactly. Again, it's depress. It's it's there on this one. Let's let's imagine it could be here, right? So it's not going to go anywhere. We depress that one, and it will start. So put it on the first one. We depress that one, and it gets locked into place when we initiate the press, and we fully depress it downward, and boom, 